Hi, this lecture is on ideals and number field. It's a quick introduction on these concepts. This is a part of the isogeny-based uh, cryptography summer school of Bristol 2021. Links, there, there is a link to the uh, lecture notes on the comment section. So what are ideals and in particular fractional ideals? So fractional ideals of the number field are just sub-modules of, of, of a certain ring, uh, typically the ring of integers, okay? So uh, the modules, the order is O that we saw in the past lecture. There is an alternative formulation for that that uh, ties to the notion of ideals. So fractional ideals are elements such that there exists a denominator D strictly greater than zero, an integer, such that D times a is an ideal of the ring O, okay, where ideal is the standard definition of ideal. Now, fractional ideals, one thing that is really important is that we can perform arithmetic operations on them. In particular, we can add them and multiply them. So what does this mean? Well, assume that, for example, the fractional ideal A and the fractional ideal B are given by their bases uh, as uh, Z modules, so as Euclidean lattices, then the fractional ideal uh, A plus B is the one that is generated by all the sums of elements of A and elements of B, which you can view as the module is generated by a, B, uh, sorry, A1, A2, A, N, B1, B2, B, N, okay? Likewise, you can view the product as the smallest ideal that contains all the products of elements of A and B, and that can be, that is generated by all the cross products of elements of the form A, I, B, J, okay? Now, one thing that's really important is these aren't bases, okay? So the, the basis uh, of, of, uh, of a fractional ideal has n elements, so these are some simply generating sets and, and linear algebra techniques uh, give us a basis, okay? Now, one category uh, of ideal, fractional ideals that, um, uh, that we'll be focusing on in the, in the future when we define the class group is the fraction, the invertible fractional ideals. So for um, and in, for a fractional ideal A to be invertible, this, uh, this uh, structure has to be well-defined. And what it is, when it is, then you can simply, you, you have something like A times its inverse is equal to, uh, well, actually, the, just the ring O, okay? So, so we have a multiplicative group of invertible fractional ideals for the multiplication law defined uh, here. Now, another uh, very important uh, um, family of, of ideals are the prime ideals. So in, the, uh, in an order in a number field, the prime ideals are maximal, okay? Now, perhaps uh, I want to first mention the fact that the terminology ideal really uh, stems from, an uh, stems from uh, the fact that there are prime ideals, in particular, uh, a unique prime decomposition uh, of ideals, of fractional ideals, I mean, of ideals and by extension of fractional ideals. So uh, that terminology comes originally from Kummer, who wanted to sort of theorized the concept of ideal numbers in, in uh, number fields as uh, numbers that would have unique factorization because elements in number fields do not have unique factorization, but ideals in order do. And that's really how the name was chosen because they're ideal. Now, um, and a prime ideal, uh, so a prime ideal, so given a prime number P, the prime, the, the, the product, so the, the, the ideal generated by P in OK splits into a product of uh, powers of prime ideal, okay? And those, those uh, uh, prime ideals here are said to divide P or to lie above P, okay? 
And so um, there is a, uh, an important uh, formula that ties three different values, um, the exponents, EIs, the number of terms, G, and a uh, last value, FI, which is the degree of the field extension, uh, uh, which is the quotient of OK by PI, OK? So we just said that the prime ideals were maximal, which means that OK quotient by PI is a field, and it's a field extension of FP. And the degree of that field extension uh, is tied by, via this formula to EI and G and M. Now, we define several different situations. First, the uh, um, sort of a, a very common case, in fact, is when P splits completely. So it means that the G value here is N. And then because of this property that the sum of the EI FIs must be N, then EIs and all EIs and FI must be one. So all of the fields in particular, all the fields OK quotient by PI are just FP. Now a P is inert if you have only one component. In this case, you have uh, that uh, P OK is a prime ideal. OK, so not only just it is a prime uh, in Q, but it's also a prime in K. And the degree of this extension OK by PI has to be the degree of the field. OK, so uh, the, the complete opposite case, in fact, of, of splitting. And then uh, P ramifies when some of those exponents are greater than one, okay? And uh, we say that K is ramified at the prime P in this case. Now, let's see how we construct a prime ideal. So let's get back to an order of K and uh, we will assume for simplicity because this is where the uh, method is the simplest is when the, uh, the prime that we're considering does not divide the index of z of theta, where theta defines uh, the, um, uh, the number field, okay? Now, t, let's say t, the polynomial, defines k, so an irreducible polynomial. Now, we can factor it over p, modulo p, okay? It's not, a re, not necessarily irreducible modulo p, so we look at its factorization into prime components, and it's going to entirely define the splitting properties of P. So it's going to be, it's going to tell us everything we need about this identity, namely that each P sub I, each prime ideal above P, will be of the form uh, a two element representation. So P times, so one component P times the order plus the components, the i irreducible component mod p uh, um, uh, times uh, the order, okay? And we also know that the degree of that component will give us the, the degree of the extension of OK by pi. Now, let's, just work, let's work this out on an example. So here I give you one number field that is defined uh, by, so it's quadratic field defined by D, okay? And we're gonna, st we're gonna study three different cases, uh, a split case, a ramified case, and an inert case, okay? In each of those cases, I'm gonna just apply the previous formula, uh, and because I carefully chose my number field, I don't have to worry about P dividing the index. In fact, if P divides the index, there is a formula, there is a, a procedure to calculate the prime ideal above P, but it's just a little bit more cumbersome. So uh, we deal with uh, uh, all but finitely many cases uh, by restricting ourselves to P not dividing the index. So here I carefully chose D so that it doesn't happen anyway. So first at P equals three, our defining polynomial X square, I mean, is congruent to X square minus one. So we have x squared minus 10 is our polynomial, but modulo 3, it becomes x squared minus 1, and that is x minus 1 times x plus 1, modulo 3, and therefore we're, ta we're talking about a totally split prime, okay?
and our um, so our two primes above p are p1 that equals three times o plus so uh, plus x plus one uh, uh, apply the square root ten so that's square root ten plus one times o and the second prime ideal is going to be so again three times o plus this time the other polynomial x minus one applied uh, to square root d so square uh, so that would be a uh, square root uh, 10 minus one okay so that gives us our split case oh and maybe one thing that uh, we want to also specify is that uh, when we quotient o by p1 and p2 what we get is f3 okay now our second case is p equals 5 so in p equals 5 if we uh, look at t of x t of x is congruent to x squared modulo 5 so here we are dealing with a ramified case because we have a power here that is greater than one now the uh we're only having one prime above p equals five and the formula gives us that that prime is of the form five times o plus well that's uh, one polynomial x applied to square root uh, uh to square root 10 so basically square root 10 times o and like the previous case we have that o quotient by p because of the formula sum of the ei fi equals n that's got to be f5 as well so a degree one extension over f5 now our last case t of x now modulo 7 is congruent to x squared plus 4 and it turns out that this is irreducible so our uh, so the way t uh, splits into a product of irreducible polynomials is is one term of degree two okay now what it what this means is that p equals seven is inert is inert and the uh, prime above seven is p equals uh, seven o uh, plus fourteen o but that's really just seven o and here we have that o quotient that p then has ex an extension of degree is an extension of degree two over uh, f seven so that's f seven square that is f forty nine so here we've dealt with uh, the uh, three different cases. Uh, that can occur in, in, in our simplest case of uh, real quadratic number fields. Last thing, uh, last notion that we want to deal with is the norm of an ideal. We've seen the norm of an element, and in fact, uh, we'll see the Canterbury. So first, what is the definition of the norm of an actual ideal? Uh, so uh, what we call sometimes integral ideal. So that will be the, 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 the cardinality of the quotient of O by A. Now we extend this notion to fractional ideals by this uh, simple formula. I would say that a norm of a quotient is the quotient of the norms. One very important case is that the norm of the prime ideal uh, uh, where Fi so where fi is the extension of o uh, quotient by pi then that norm of the prime ideal is going to be precisely p to the fi okay so a norm of a split prime for example is going to be p but when we have ramification then we have a higher power of p and now here is the good news the good news is the norm agrees between an ideal and an element in the sense that if an element generates an ideal, so if an ideal is principal, then the norm of the ideal is exactly the norm of an element that generates that ideal. So that is a really important property, of course. So we've seen the basics of ideals in number field just enough so that we'll be pursuing our uh, route towards the class group and the class group computation. 
Thank you for your attention and see you in the next lecture.